what's going on internet, IG here again today, and we're gonna be starting a new series on switching to Linux Mint 17.1. Now, obviously the inspiration for this series comes from the previous series of switching to that I did where I switched to OpenSUSE 13.1 for quite some time. And uh, obviously 13.2 has come out and I'm tempted to revisit that series in the near future with the newer release of OpenSUSE. But here in the meantime, Linux Mint 17.1 is by far one of the best distributions to come out for this year. And while I've had very little time to actually play with it, uh, I have actually had a little bit of extra time to play with both the Cinnamon and the Mate version while I've been kind of shifting house and everything. Now that we're settled down a bit, we might be able to get through this series uh, pretty quickly. And, uh, and basically what I'm doing here is uh, I've got a fresh install on my primary machine. It's sitting on my SSD. I've wiped my previous install of Ubuntu that I had on here. So this is basically going to be my daily driver, whether I like it or not now. Don't know if that was the best idea in the world, but we're gonna run with it anyway. And I'm gonna practically vlog everything that happens as we go along and then break it up into a bunch of different videos. So I'm gonna be setting up this machine as the way I would use it and in the process, uh, giving you guys some suggestions on different apps, different tweaks, different ways you can customize the system and also some of the new features that come with Linux Mint 17.1. Rebecca. Now, obviously I am using the Cinnamon 64-bit edition here. Cinnamon is basically the modern reincarnation of what the Mint team wanted out of GNOME 3. So it does use a lot of the same technology, but it is definitely independent and developing on its own as its, stand as its own standalone desktop environment. Uh, obviously it's got a very, tra uh, very traditional desktop user, uh, user sort of interface paradigm here in terms of a simple panel along the bottom with your system tray in the bottom right and a menu in the bottom left, a couple of shortcut icons and of course your task manager running along the bottom. Now of course for anyone who's seen Linux Mint before this is all really old hat. So let's just get straight into what I'm going to do to get this system up to where I want it to be. First of all, we've got this welcome screen here, which I did jump briefly into the chat room here. As you can see, it's looking up the different chat rooms that are available, and you can see there's always a bit of a, a bit of activity going on in here before they were having a bit of a discussion on how to get a certain printer working. So if you ever have any issues while using Linux Mint and you're wondering why uh, something isn't working, then definitely jump in here and, uh, and you'll be able to get answers pretty quickly. As you can see, there's a huge list of people that come in here, and at the moment we've got a handful of people in here. So yeah, it's always good to come in here and check and just to hang out uh, as you'll probably get some support pretty quickly. Also, they've got a fantastic user guide there as well uh, for Linux Mint 17. They do actually have it in the help section here at the moment. So an introduction to the desktop there. You've got your menu, your places. So that's also helpful again. You also got quick links to other useful things like backing up your data, hardware support database, your idea, uh, different ideas that people have submitted, as well as your software manager. Uh, again, more links to important information, release notes, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna disable that from starting up because I don't necessarily want that every time. First thing, change the wallpaper because I can't take branded wallpapers for all that long. Now, one of the best things that I do like about the new 17.1 release, yes, it's shallow, but the fact that they've categorized all of the different wallpapers that they have available on Linux Mint into their different release cycles. So you can actually use all the different wallpapers from previous releases of Linux Mint all the way back to the really retro releases, uh, which are some of my all time favorite wallpapers. So even though I just said I really don't like branded wallpapers, I'm going to go with fresh because for me, Fresh was the wallpaper that started it all for me. Linux Mint 8 was my first full-time Linux distribution, and boy, has it come a long way since then. So I'm gonna stick with that because it looks fresh and minty and green, and I simply love it. All right, moving on from there, it's time to get our repositories in order. Repositories are, of course, those places where you can get software from. Basically, they're different directories on a server that you can pull down software and updates for. So I'm going to change these servers for my area so that I get better download speeds. Put in your root password and you'll be given some options there. Now, again, Linux Mint has been doing this so well for such a long time that they've got their own tools to manage all this kind of thing and they're second to none in my opinion in terms of making it super easy but still giving you all the options that you need. So I'm gonna go in here, it'll automatically do a speed test at, for all the different uh, repositories that are out there and it'll take a little while but it soon and uh, alerts me that the internode mirrors are the one that will come out on top. So I will choose that for the Linux Mint packages and then for Ubuntu it will do the same thing. And I have encountered my first crash. How embarrassing. 
There you go, software is not as infallible as we wish it was, even if it is a long-term support release. So let's give that another shot and I will choose the internode mirrors there and we are all done. We update the cache and it's gonna quickly run out to those servers and pull down the extra software that it needs and then we will be all up to date in terms of the, I guess the catalog of software that is available on the system. Once the catalog has refreshed, which it shouldn't be too much longer now, uh, you'll see down here in the system tray on the bottom right hand side, we've got a little icon here with a little shield. Now for Linux Mint old timers, this is of course the update manager. And again, uh, I'm very tempted to call this the best update manager that there is in the Linux world right now, uh, simply in terms of its ease of use, its categorization, and also its, uh, its really smart screening uh, features there as well in terms of how important an update is and whether or not it, it warrants you updating it and how much it's going to affect the stability of the system. So as you can see here, categorizing uh, some, of the, some of the tools and some of the software that Linux Mint has direct control over such as Firefox, GNOME Calculator, and a Flash plugin for Steam, all the way down to the super, uh, the ones that are super outside of Linux Mint's control, like the Linux kernel, for example. Some of these are tested, some of these aren't, and the level uh, to which these updates uh, have been assigned here is basically indicative of how stable these updates and how tested they are. So there you go, and it has some different uh, indicators there as well in terms of security or features that you're going to get out of them. So that is fantastic. So we're gonna let those updates run and install. And uh, again, once you give it your root password, it will run out and grab those and lay those down on the hard drive for you. Definitely recommended on a fresh install of any new OS or any new software, go out and check for all the latest updates because you'll save yourselves a lot of headache in the long run. Moving on from there, let's customize this desktop a bit. The fantastic thing that I like about the Cinnamon desktop is the fact that you can actually customize a lot of the desktop environment. A lot of modern OSs nowadays and a lot of modern systems are trying to take out the customization features for the sake of the new user that they don't get too swamped. Linux Mint does a fantastic job in terms of appealing to a user interface and a user experience that people are very familiar with, so they're not necessarily going to want to change a whole bunch. However, they do give the options there for those who do have a particular way of working. So, for example, you've got applets here that you can add to your task panel down the bottom here, which for the moment I'm relatively happy with how this looks, um, and obviously you know, I'll probably add more as, as time goes on, but for the moment, I'm pretty happy with that. Also, you can jump online to uh, add some more applets and more functionality, a little bit like the KDE desktop environment. And obviously that's gonna take a little while for it to uh, recache, uh, refresh the cache. So I'm just gonna cancel that and go back to all settings. And as far as desklets are concerned, these are a bit like widgets. So I am going to add the weather widget to my desktop. And uh, let's see, that is not where I am. So let's just configure this one real quick to give it the weather where I am living. And there you go. That's that done. And in terms of account details, you can see here that I've just got, uh, I can add an account picture if I like, or change my password. That's all pretty simple stuff. Hot corners are something that's also very helpful. Uh, again, I, if you go up into the top corner, you can add more desktops. And if you go into the bottom corner, you can enable these different hot corners to add different functionality to the desktop, including showing the desktop, showing all the windows, showing all your workspaces, stuff like that. We also have a bit of a notification center down the bottom here as well. Uh, when I do get a notification, it'll pop up down in the system tray here in the bottom right, and uh, it'll also keep a list of those notifications so I can go back and see if I missed an instant message from someone or something along those lines. So there's a lot of different options here that you've got in Linux Mint uh, in the Cinnamon edition. They also do have the Mate or uh, Mate edition, uh, which is of course the kind of the GNOME 2 fork. Uh, but ha having all, uh, having said all of that, uh, I think the default options that they give you out of the box is just enough that people are going to be familiar with what they're using. Uh, but at the same time, if people do want more options there, they've got them. Uh, now, also one other thing that's worth looking at is the driver management. Now, as I am installing updates, I might have limited success here at the same time as it will have to go out to some servers to check what sort of uh, software is available for the drivers that I have. 
And there you have it, because of the fact it detects that I've got an NVIDIA GeForce GT540M, uh, it's given me a couple of options there in terms of uh, drivers that I can use to better utilize what's in my system. So I can uh, easily install one click uh, with the NVIDIA drivers there, which I might do once I've finished up, uh, installing the updates here, which I think are pretty much finished. And there you go, it has just left all the level four and five updates available there that I can download and install later. And I'm simply going to download and install the NVIDIA drivers here now. Again, drivers are something that are definitely recommended, but they're not they're not uh, they're not entirely necessary. If you're wanting to stay more open source uh, and more, I guess, free software conscious with your install, then chances are you're probably not using Linux Mint in the first place. But uh, if you're just an everyday user who wants to get the best performance out of their hardware, then I definitely recommend you jump in there and grab your drivers from the driver manager. Certainly a lot easier than it makes for other distributions. Um, again, that's what makes Linux Mint so accessible for the new user. And again, let's have a quick explore in themes here. You've got different ways you can change the themes now, uh, which is again, a lot more user friendly. You can also change the colors of the icons, which I think is fantastic as well. A welcome addition from the, uh, from the pretty boring green that we're used to. Again, you can change the colors of the window controls as well. So I'm going to change to the aqua and let's go with a black mouse. And you can also change the desktop theme to something that suits uh, the Linux Mint uh, theme as well. So as you can see now, I've changed to the aqua theme and things are looking a little bit more blue, which uh, for the moment we'll roll with that, but that might change as time goes on. And now as it is being like five minutes and my mind is uh, over the green background, Let's change to the new wallpapers that are bundled in Rebecca and let's start a slideshow changing every 15 minutes because I think that's a good idea. And as you can see, the desktop is already looking more like a desktop that I would use on an everyday basis. Uh, it's just looking uh, very crisp, clear, very minty, uh, even though we've been able to change the colors of wallpapers, update the drivers, uh, update the repositories. And now we're all set to install software. So that'll probably do us for this first time around in switching to Linux Mint 17.1. I know I've flown through this really quickly, uh, but of course, if you have any questions, then I will be on Twitter more than any other social network in the, in the near future. So definitely direct all your questions there at InGalactic and uh, you'll be able to find uh, answers to any questions you might have there. And uh, also if you have any suggestions about apps or desklets or cinnamon desktop widgets or even applets for the taskbar that you have really enjoyed, then let me know and even send me screenshots on Twitter as well. And, uh, and I'll feature some of the ones that I really like in upcoming videos. So we're gonna let the NVIDIA drivers keep doing its thing. And I will see you all in the very next episode. Of course, if you are on other social networks like Google Plus and Facebook, you can find me there as well. Links in the description below. And I will catch you all next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.